I'm Cindy Collin Williams, and we are the cast of Mississippi Dam. And you're watching Blase TV. I'm Tina Mabry, the writer director of Mississippi Dam. coming up with the idea around in 2005 and I was really interested because when I left Mississippi in 2001 I kind of had all these issues going on with my family dealing with like addiction molestation and violence and I thought you know if I just got outside of Mississippi if I got outside of the borders that you know I was really naive I thought if I get out you know it'll be behind me but it really wasn't and I realized it was a complete mindset that I had to free myself from so I really started becoming interested in trying to tell a story about our family, but also focus on escaping the mindset and not necessarily a, you know, a geographical location, because it's more than it. Making it was very cathartic for me to kind of heal over some things. But to sit down and watch it from the beginning to the end, uh, you know, it was, it was emotional, because I think one, you know, you finish a film, you're happy, then you get to the end, but two, you know, I was like, okay, this is, these are things that I overcame, and there's not anything to be embarrassed about. It's something that you embrace as who you are, and it makes you who you are, and you shouldn't shy away from that. And I mean, I think that's one of the things I got from it that I don't think I expected to, to become that secure in our company. So basically, there were, nobody was making films in Mississippi, and I've always had a passion for it. I started to kind of write my first novel when I was 12. It was horrible. <laughs> so I look back now, but you know, it was me trying to express myself and put things into words and trying to be lyr lyrically express myself. And uh, then I just decided, I was like, well, I'm going to college and I give up my film dream and writing dream. And I was like, okay, I'm a poli sci and psych major. I was gonna, you know, I got to the end of my undergraduate career, my you know, year, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to law school. And then I started thinking, I saw uh, two movies, uh, Love and Basketball, Gina Prince Blackwood, and Boys Don't Cry, Kimberly Pierce. And I said, you know what, I went and researched those two women everywhere they went to school, like their entire history, you know, filmography, to see where they were coming from. And I started to realize, you know what, I don't have a film undergrad degree and it's okay. I'm going to go and try it. So I applied to all major film schools, got rejected from every single one. My top choice was USC. I got into USC. And that was it. And But I figured if I was going to go into debt, further in debt, I might as well do it for something I love. You know, and so, and that's the kind of thing I keep reminding myself no matter what's going on. I choose to do this. I'm blessed enough that I can do something I love to do. You know, because we all have sat up in an office somewhere wanting to blow our brains out because <laughs> we have to pay our bills. You know, but it's a blessing that most of the time I get a chance just to do what I want to do. I think it's kind of a it's a double-sided kind of thing but one the good thing is you can go out on your own now get your own camera do your own thing everything is definitely built where it's filmmaker friendly so you can make your own film so you're not necessarily stuck to say I just gotta shoot on 35 or I gotta have this and you have to spend a million millions of dollars to do it you can do it with 40,000 have a good product but then the other part of it is well if everybody can do that you oversaturate the market <laughs> How do you really get a chance to stand out from so many films? Um, and the, I mean, the industry, I think, is going to—it's a very, very uh, political place, and uh, we always have to try to break into it because it's what we know. Um, but at the same time, it's that you know, honestly, it's just not something that is always friendly to women. So you don't—you know, unfortunately, don't have as many women directors as you should, or they're not being highlighted. They actually are there, but you never hear about them. You know, or especially women of color. <laughs> directors. It's the numbers of how many you know are very low. And that's very, very sad. As a writer, I'm writing a uh, feature supernatural thriller for a, a director, a British director uh, named Pratima Parmar. And she actually is um, actually working right now in Atlanta in doc with Alice Walker. So I'm doing that on the side. <laughs> But then as far as our company, I'm working on another Southern drama. I haven't really fleshed anything out or, you know, comfortable enough to talk about it. But we're still working on that. But more importantly, you know, our company is, we're basically out of the margins, redefining the mainstream. 
you know, we really want to give a voice to people who are in a marginalized group. I mean, we don't often see that in the mainstream. We don't feel like we're represented, whether you be a person of color, your sexual orientation, you know, a woman. <laughs> I mean, and you need to have a venue of which you can, you know, a medium, whether where you can see yourself reflected in that. And more importantly, told by people from that point of view, too. I mean, because I think sometimes it's great to see someone who's necessarily not from that, you know, marginalized group talking about it. But I do believe there is a certain thing when you talk about it yourself and when you come from it, there lends a little bit more authenticity to it.